Did you know that Michael Saylor's price target for Bitcoin by the end of 2024 is $350,000 per Bitcoin? So this green line on my chart here is the price target of $350,000. And if I put another line on my chart at the end of this year, so basically we've got two months to see a God candle all the way up to $300,000. And fifty thousand dollars. As you guys can see, a price target like this by the end of this year is unrealistic. That being said, a price target like this eventually for Bitcoin is very realistic. Michael Saylor is not a dumb guy, so when you see very intelligent, credible people like Michael Saylor giving Bitcoin such a bullish price target in a short period of time, you have to ask yourself what data are they seeing that the rest of us are not seeing? And once you start looking deep into the state of the global economy right now, it becomes pretty clear that the price of Bitcoin in theory could go parabolic because look at this. The pace at which US national debt is increasing is staggering. Over the last 12 years, 12 trillion in debt has been added. When we're talking about such large numbers as 12 trillion dollars, it can be hard to conceptualize this. But for context, it took the US 221 years to create its first 12 trillion dollars in debt so what on earth is happening over the last five years to the state of the global economy and have you guys ever wondered why having two percent inflation is healthy why is having inflation healthy in the first place well here's the truth and this might blow your mind if you haven't studied economics at a high level inflation reduces the value of debt over time because over time the value of the currency weakens for example 100 years ago you might have been able to buy a candle like this for maybe ten dollars now a candle like this might cost you a hundred dollars the same comparison applies to debt as well a couple hundred years ago the value of your debt may be wildly different to the value of your debt today in terms of actual purchasing power so the whole system is a house of cards and inflation is here to stay so in a fiat based system money is created via debt so it's inevitable that debt is going to continue increasing over time. Therefore, inflation is very likely going to increase over time, which is why when you see people like Michael Saylor giving Bitcoin such a bullish price target, it's actually realistic when you understand what is the value of the currency? Because what are we pricing Bitcoin in? We're pricing it in this thing right here, the dollar. So the dollar is going to reduce in purchasing power over time relative to one Bitcoin and Bitcoin is a scarce asset. It's the same reason why property prices increase over time. But have you noticed how people over time are struggling to buy property? Why is that? It's because a lot of people store and preserve their purchasing power in cash. And cash is constantly losing value over time. It's actually a fugazi that $1 is still $1. That's not the truth. $1 100 years ago is worth way more than $1 today. $1 today should actually be $0.00001. Like it's not worth anywhere near the same amount. So this here is the chart of gold. And as you can see over time, the chart of gold has increased in price. Did you know that if you tried to buy a house 100 years ago in gold, and if you tried to buy the same house today in gold, it would cost the same amount of gold. Whereas if you tried to buy that same house using the British pound, US dollars, Australian dollars. In all of those currencies, the value of the house looks like it's getting more expensive. But in reality, the only thing that's changing is the value of the currency. It's not the value of the actual house itself. So you can see how as the economy is getting out of control over time, there is increasing demand for something that is the solution to this. So some people are fleeing to gold. Some people are hoping that a new president can come in and solve the solution. But to be honest, that's just the house of cards. It's very unlikely that a new president will solve the underlying issue here because some people call debt a drug. Once the system is running on this drug, if you suddenly try to remove the drug away, there's going to be a lot of political tension. A lot of people are not going to like the president that tried to do the correct thing to save the economy in the long run. So the current fiat system is unlikely to change until there is a changing world order event when a great empire eventually declines. And the blue line here shows that over time, the US is starting its slow decline, just like what happened to the UK a couple hundred years ago. And as you can see, the UK, this dark blue line started its decline in the 1800s hundreds starts off slowly and then suddenly there is a big collapse in the empire the british empire was hit hard by several wars which really impacted the economy and then in recent history we've had brexit and stuff like that which has really impacted this economy's ability to recover this is all explained in a lot of detail in this life-changing book right here this is one of my 
top 10 favorite books. It's called The Changing World Order by Ray Dalio. Highly, highly recommend this to anyone who has an interest in crypto and Bitcoin. So to protect your purchasing power over time, you've got gold and you've also got a better option, which is Bitcoin. Yes, Bitcoin is more volatile. So in the good times, it can go up exponentially more. And then in the bad times, it can go down exponentially more. But over time, what we're seeing is gold and Bitcoin are very, very correlated. As you can see, the price of gold is currently at a new all-time high price. However, Bitcoin has not broken off to a new all-time high price. But we're weeks away from a massive catalyst that could skyrocket Bitcoin off to a completely new all-time high price, which is the US election. We can see in the past after US elections, once that uncertainty is out of the way, the price of Bitcoin rallies off to a new all-time high price. Obviously, nothing's guaranteed, but there is a strong possibility we could see this happen again, especially if Donald Trump is likely going to win the US election, as Donald Trump has openly said that he wants to make Bitcoin a strategic reserve asset for the United States of America. Also on Friday this week, Joe Rogan is interviewing Donald Trump. So we might hear Bitcoin being mentioned in that podcast. There's also rumors that Kamala Harris may also join the show before the election. So it'd be great to hear her opinions on crypto as well in detail. Either way, over time, the demand for a monetary debasement hedge, just like Bitcoin, is becoming increasingly more important. And we can see that Russia is now legalizing Bitcoin mining on the 1st of November, which is another bullish catalyst for the price of Bitcoin. So on the macro level, it's hard not to be bullish on Bitcoin. We can see on this indicator right here, we can see volume weighted average price is starting to curve back in. Historically in the past, once volume weighted average price started to curve back in, it has led to a resurgence in the price of Bitcoin. We can also see that over time, money flow, which is this inner wave on this indicator, is very much in the thick and the positive right now. So this is a healthy area for the price of Bitcoin to accumulate before a rapid expansion to the upside side as we see momentum which is this blue wave on this indicator as we see momentum start to thicken up if we look at the daily time frame we can see momentum has just put in a red dot on this indicator meaning this might be an area where we see local resistance for the price of bitcoin as we can see in the past whenever this indicator puts in red dots that does lead to a bit of local resistance for the price of bitcoin however that being said when money flow is aggressively in the thick and we see momentum starting to top out like this sometimes the price of bitcoin can just continue to grind up which is why it's very important to look at the money flow and see how that money flow develops over time in yesterday's video on the trading drip channel we spoke about how as price point came down to the point of control price which is this pink line here this shows us the most popular price in the market for bitcoin which happens to be around sixty-seven thousand dollars. we could see that aggressive buyers were coming in at this price point which was holding off short sellers as momentum was coming in however this momentum wave was very short-lived and as soon as it topped out here we can then see price action broke below poc and very quickly flowed through value area low which was a scenario that we spoke about in yesterday's video of course in the long run we're bullish on the price of bitcoin for all the reasons that we've outlined already in this video but in the short run to remain bullish here we need to see momentum on this indicator start to come up as money flow returns back into the positive so for the rest of this week, we want to see this green box here holding as a support area for Bitcoin or to see price action very quickly reclaim POC where price action was ranging before. Obviously, nothing goes up in a perfectly straight line. There will be these healthy retracements along the move up, but it's hard not to be bullish on Bitcoin right now. And you can see why people like Michael Saylor in the long run have a price target of $350,000 plus for Bitcoin.